So measuring harmonics. Now again, I'm going to take you back to you know some some basic electrical engineering or maybe one of your entry level math classes. I am not going to dig through the details because honestly, I don't remember the math. But um, a lot of these techniques that we're going to use utilize the fast Fourier transform or the the discrete Fourier transform. Um, and all we need to remember is that the Fourier transform is a is a mathematical filter. We enter an equation into an algorithm. We use complex numbers, and we take our kind of abstract sine wave and we extract, and this did not turn out good on my slide, I apologize, um, we extract those different frequencies. So we can pull out, you know, this is um, X frequency and Y amplitude, and then we can plot that out. So we can take our wave and we can understand what all those amplitudes and frequencies are. Now, when we talk about measurement, um, we need to remember that we need to have a sufficient sample rate or a sufficient sample time and a sufficient sample rate. So because we're doing a frequency analysis and we're looking over a period of time for how many events are happening, we need to have enough time for those events to happen. And kind of the, the quick example is if we were to blast um, a sine wave. Well, if we have you know four rotations of that sine wave and we perform our FFT, so we have our little G of T goes into our FFT, comes out with a big G of T. We can see that we have a frequency at a given amplitude at a very specific frequency. Well now, okay, we reduce that from maybe four sine waves to three. We don't have as much information. The mathematical transform can't act as well. And now we see these kind of weird ripple guys centered around our main frequency. We don't have enough samples. We don't have enough time window. We don't have enough occurrences of the frequency to really say for sure it's this very specific frequency. And then we go down to one sine wave and we see that we barely know what the frequency is. So we need to remember, we need to have a big enough window to have several events happen because we're picking out that frequency. But we also need to sample at a rate high enough that we're not aliasing the signal, that we actually have all the frequencies of interest. Oh, wrong direction. So um, kind of getting into the, the more nitty gritty details. On the right hand side, I have a current of microphone and a torque. So the torque is in black. And if we take the frequency domain, you know, we can see just kind of a very traditional FFT of amplitude on the Y versus frequency on the X. Um, and just a couple notes, again, from the measurement side. You know, we need to we need we need to measure the signal at a significant or a sufficient bandwidth. So, you know, everybody always quotes the Nyquist frequency, which is two times the frequency of interest. But if we really look at the details of measurement, we need to look at the filters of our measurement system. We need to look at, you know, what the sampling rate is. And, and we need to filter higher than the frequency of interest. So we need to make sure that our frequency of interest has sampling rate way sufficient and then filters um, above that frequency of interest because we need to do things like anti-aliasing, because we need to do things like signal conditioning. So you need to really understand what the bandwidth of your amplifiers are. Just because your sample rate is super high does not mean you're going to catch the signals of interest. You could filter it away. So you need to check both your sample rate and your filters. Um, you know, we, we have a variety of different analysis types we can do. You know, all of them do rely off of kind of the Fourier analysis. But, you know, we, we have the FFT, which is featured here. It's really quick and easy, but it might not give us, it might actually give us too much information typically. Um, we could do a harmonic order analysis where we do it based off the speed of the machine. Um, but in this case, we need to know about the fundamental frequency. And I'll, I'll touch on each of these a little bit more. And then we can do things like harmonic power analysis, where if we know the different harmonic orders and we can identify the harmonic phasing, we can start to understand what is the power from these different harmonics. How much energy am I losing because of these different harmonics? And this is where we get really into a deep understanding. You know, if I'm doing a third order or a third harmonic injection, is that creating extra losses that, that mitigate its purpose? And, and all of these techniques can be executed on any signal, current, torque, you know, acceleration, microphones, vibration. Um, order analysis is, is really key to things like, um, vibration and and noise and i'm sure there's a lot of uh nvh engineers in here falling asleep with my with my kind of basic overview but um i think we'll uh, forget the basics quite a bit 